Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. Welcome to Module 1 of the Droner's Guide to the 2019 Canadian RPAS Regulations. My Droner's Guide is organized into modules. This module will cover two topics, drone registration and basic operations. And down here are all of the regulations that we'll be going through in this module, one by one, with a translation into Don speak beside each and every one of them. And don't forget, the entire presentation package from the Droner's Guide series of training modules is available for a nominal fee. See link in the description below. You'll get a PDF soft copy format delivered to you instantly. It has over 100 pages of information and every one of the 901 regulations is covered. There's a clear explanation for every rule, additional documentation, and active links to additional resources. As a bonus, I'll throw in a free starter droning logbook with your purchase of the Droner's Guide material. This will be a soft copy Excel spreadsheet with multiple tabs, each of which is easily customizable to your drone and your operation. This will cover all of your required logs, procedures, and identification requirements for your certification. Why do your own? Just start with mine. All right, let's get started with drone registration. This is how this module will work and all of the subsequent training modules. You'll see the actual wording from each of the regulations on the left-hand side of each page. These are the Canadian Aviation Regulations. For each one, you'll see the, the number, 90102, the title, registration in this case, and the actual verbatim rules from the regulation. At the beginning of each module, I will provide you with a link to the full set of RPAS regulations that has all of these in it. They're not in the order that I go through. I've organized them into some sort of logical sense. Beside each set of regulations, normally I'll only have one on a page, but for this simple one I have three, you'll see my interpretation of the regulations and in some cases an active link to further information. All right, let's get started with this one. This is registering your drone. There's three regulations associated with it, registration itself, the registration number, and access to it. All of this, what it means is you need to register your drone, each and every one of them, and put the number that you receive on your drone. How do you do that? You register online. It's a $5 fee. Put the number that you receive in an email on the drone by hand or with a label. I'll show you a picture of mine on the next page. Do print off your registration email and keep it with your drone gear or at least be able to access it on your phone. And if you've purchased my material and have the logbook, you can enter it onto your logbook and have it all in one spot. Here's my Spark drone and the registration number on it in a simple label that I had a, I have a label maker and produce the label on that. All right, you must also keep your drone registration up to date. There are two rules around this, one about canceling it and one about changing your name or address. So bottom line is you need to update your drone registration if you sell or lose your drone or if it gets stolen or if you move. Now, why would you bother to do that? Well, if you sell your drone or it is stolen and you don't update the registration, you could be held responsible if your drone is involved in one of these Gatwick-like incidents. Next, eligibility for drone registration. Bottom line, you must be Canadian. The rule number is 90104. Only Canadian citizens or permanent residents of Canada can register their drones. You must be 14 years old to register. Now, I say only people, but corporations and government entities can also register their drones. Visitors to Canada, as a result, cannot legally fly their drones here. I don't make up these rules. I don't necessarily support all these rules, for example, this one, but these are the rules and I'm trying to help you to understand what they say. The next two rules, 90105 and 06, are really details of an administrative nature. I won't get into the details of them at all here. They don't really pertain to real people like us. Basic versus advanced operations. This is getting into the next topic. It's 
really important to understand the difference between basic and advanced operations when it comes to flying a drone. So let's walk through the five key criteria that distinguish, distinguishes these two kinds of operations. We'll start with airports and controlled airspace. When you are flying with basic operations, which means you have a basic operations certificate, you must stay 5.6 kilometers or three nautical miles and going forward, I'll only stick with the metrics, metric uh, distances. You must stay 5.6 kilometers away from airports, 1.9 kilometers away from heliports, and you may not fly in controlled or restricted airspace. Controlled airspace is typically around aerodromes like this. Restricted airspace is additional areas, typically of a military nature or um, particular spaces like over Parliament Hill. If you have your advanced operations certificate, you may fly in these zones, close to airports, or in controlled or restricted airspace, if you have approval. And we'll get into that in the advanced operations video. In terms of proximity to people, it is important to distinguish between bystanders and people who are involved in the operation. So to be involved in the operation, you are either the pilot, a member of the crew associated with your operation, such as a visual observer, or someone who is uh, distinctly involved in your operation, but not the, a crew member. For example, a member of your family who knows that you are droning and is aware of the danger, or a friend or a client in the case of a commercial operation. So bystanders must be more than 30 meters away from your drone at all times. You have to keep it away. And that means, by definition, that you must not fly over bystanders. So that 30 meters is horizontally away from the bystanders at all at altitudes. If you have your advanced operations certificate, you may fly closer if you have the right kind of drone. So if you have a drone that is approved for flying what's called close to people, you can fly up to five meters away from bystanders. If you have a drone that has been approved for flying over or over people, then you can fly right over those people when you're flying your drone. Advertised events are slightly different than these rules that we have up here. An advertised event is defined as any publicly advertised uh, event such as a parade, music concerts that are outside, sporting events, um, anything like that. If you are flying with your basic operations certificate, you must not fly at an advertised event. And even if you have your advanced operations certificate, you may not fly at an advertised event. There are also restrictions in terms of the types of drones that you can fly under these two certificates. If you're flying a drone that's less than 250 grams, you don't, none of these rules apply to you and you are free to fly anywhere you want, safely of course. If your drone is between 250 grams and 25 kilograms, which would be a honking big drone, you can fly any kind of drone in that weight class under basic operations. However, if you're going to fly in an advanced operation environment with that same weight class of drone, it must be on the Transport Canada approved list. And when we get again into the advanced operations video, I'll give you a link to that approved list and we can see all the details around that. In order to fly in this basic operations mode, you need to pass the basic operations pilot exam. If you're flying an advanced operation, you have to do more. You have to pass the advanced operations pilot exam, which is tougher. You have to pass a personal flight review with a flight reviewer, and you must be flying an approved drone in order to fly close to people, over people, or even in controlled airspace. If your flight is not covered by any of these conditions, for example, if your drone is over 25 kilograms, you must fly using an SFOC, which is a special flight operating certificate that you must apply for at least 30 days in advance. 
and I'll be talking about that in a future video as well. Okay, this is a really important chart to understand. This is where it's defined in the rules. 901.53 defines basic operations and 901.62 defines advanced operations. Strangely enough, basic operations are basically defined as flights that do not fall into the advanced operations criteria, nor require an SFOC. So probably easier than trying to read through all these, these things, just refer to my table to understand the criteria. What does it take to get a basic operations pilot certificate? Let's walk through those regulations. For basic operations flights, you need to have at least a basic operations pilot certificate. How do you do that? Very simple. You pass the basic operations exam. And there's a link to it right there. If you are a child under 14 years old, you can fly a basic operations flight, but only under circum uh, direct supervision of a certified pilot. Your pilot certificate, once you secure it, is valid for two years. It never really expires. However, after two years, you must revalidate it. You can revalidate it by either retaking the exam or a higher level exam, or you can pass a flight review, or you can take what is called recurrent training at a flight school. Your pilot certificate must be accessible at all times during your flight. So you need to have proof that you have uh, your pilot certificate with you. I recommend you print off your pilot certificate, which you receive as an email, and keep it with your drone gear at all times. That makes it super simple. Or you can keep it in an accessible spot on your phone, or you can write down the number and the details on that logbook that I described earlier. When taking the exam, there are some rules, and these are the same rules for whether it's a basic exam or an advanced exam. You must take the exam yourself without help from anyone else at the time. You can't copy or remove any exam questions, and you need to wait 24 hours before retaking the exam should you fail to pass. Every time you take the exam, it costs $10 to, uh, to take it. All right, those are all of the regulations around drone registration and around the basic operations activities for drones. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe to my channel, and I hope that you'll watch more of my training videos.